It's an interesting matchup. I'm, I'm wondering how much both of these guys have left, especially Lara because he's older. And Danny, I mean, how, how fast is he going to like, get off that rust from these last couple of years? Um, and I 100% I, I agree with you. I don't know if these answers for the middleweight division are going to be answered after this fight. Uh, but one of their careers is going to continue on, that's for sure. Welcome, everyone, to Boxing Scene's Top Stories. I am George DiMatellis. Download the app where apps are available to get the full Pro Box TV experience. And part of that experience is dealing and picking the minds of our great champions here. We have Chris Algieri. And we got Pauli Malignaggi joining us here on Top Stories. Well, WBA middleweight champion Edislandi Lara isn't speaking like a man expecting Danny Garcia to beat him to become a three-division champion and a Hall of Famer. At his public workout this week, Lara said he believes his experience at middleweight gives him an edge. All, is, all I can say, this is Lara speaking here, saying, all I can say is be ready. Danny Garcia was a great champion, but that was at a lower weight class. 160 is a whole different ball game. All right, Paulie, what is it about this fight that you like and what do you make of Lara's comments? I mean, he's got a point. I mean, Garcia is a naturally smaller guy, so of course you're going to say that. But you're also going to say all the relevant things. I mean, Lara at this point has been at the top of the sport for a long time. And when you're at the top of the sport for a long time, you obviously know your way around the ring, but you also know your way around the portable effect of the media and things of that nature. So by saying, oh, well, Garcia has never fought at this weight class, that's that's a natural thing to say uh, when you're fighting a guy who's coming up in weight and, and and you're looking to get the advantage, especially when you're trying to deflect away from the fact that you're 40 years old, you know? So, which is when he's, which is something that a lot of people are going to look at as criticism for a lot. Well, you know what? It, he's been good, but at this age, can he can he really still hold up his end of the bargain? So that's, that's, why, that's why this fight is interesting. Can Garcia compete at middleweight? Can Lara still hold a world-class level at this age? Or is it because the weight class is a little is a little diminished right now? And honestly, are we going to even get any of these answers by these guys fighting each other? Well, may, we, we might still have these questions regardless of the result of this fight. Because we may say after Garcia beats Lara, you know what? Did he, he really fight a real middleweight? You know, that was a 40-year-old guy. And if Lara beats Garcia, well, you know what? Did he, it's a title defense, but, you know, Garcia had never been at this weight class. That's 20, that's 20 pounds above, you know, the weight, when he was above the weight he was first dominating at when he was uh, a world champion, 140 pounds, you know. So there's still going to be – you can still create question marks after this fight. But going into the fight, you're going to look for those quotables. These are two experienced guys. You're going to know what to say around the media because you've been around – by this point in your career, you've been around the media, you know, tons of times. And you know what's going to be quotable. And I just think that this, this is, you know, him just pumping things up a little bit. Um Par for the course, in my opinion. Yeah, Champ, I, I agree. I mean, what else is he supposed to say at this point? You know, we're talking about Lara when he's talking about uh, Danny Garcia. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Danny's not young either. Danny's 36 years old, and he's been extremely inactive. This is only his, uh, I believe, second fight in four years, and this, this is his first at 160. He only had one fight at 54. So he's definitely the smaller man. And the thing about Danny Garcia, at his best, he's a fantastic counterpuncher with great timing. And being inactive worries me about a guy like Danny Garcia who, who really, really depends on that timing to catch guys, especially with that vaunted left hook that he's got. Um, he's not a your turn, my turn guy. He punches with you. And that's how he catches a lot of, uh, a, a lot of fighters, a lot of quicker fighters as well. I mean, I remember that Amir Khan fight. Amir Khan was, was having his way for the first couple of rounds, and then bang, Danny catches him with a, with a beautifully timed left hook that had Khan all but done. So... You know, Danny's one of those guys, he, he, he's very good at finding a way. But how far removed is he from that gr fantastically timed champion? It's been, it's been a lot of years out of the ring. Not sure how much he's actually stayed in the gym. Also moving up in weight, how he's going to deal with a guy like Lara, who defensively has always been very, very good and very sharp. And recently he's shown real power. He's knocking guys out. Like, yeah, granted, we're not talking about world-class guys. And as you mentioned, 160 is a little, a little soft this, this, uh, in this generation right now. Uh, but Lara is still putting guys out on their back. And some guys who are actually pretty tough, too. So um, it's an interesting matchup. I'm, I'm wondering how much both of these guys have left, especially Lara because he's older. And Danny, I mean, how, how fast is he going to like, get off that rust from these last couple of years? Um, and I 100% I, I agree with you. I don't know if these answers for the middleweight division are going to be answered after this fight. Uh, but one of their careers is going to continue on, that's for sure.
Yeah, Danny Garcia, a former unified champion at 140, a champion at 147. Chris mentioned it, just fought once at 154. And at 36 years of age, that'll be something to watch for in that matchup. By the way, it's the co-main event of that Canelo Alvarez-Edgar Berlanga fight on September 14th on pay-per-view. That should be a good one for the WBA, WBA middleweight title. And, of course, we'll have post -fight, uh, the uh, post-fight recap here on Pro Box TV. And we will always keep you updated on what's going on in the world of boxing here on Top Stories. And a reminder to scan the QR code and download the app where apps are available. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the best live fight series in all of boxing. Wednesday night fight, September 11th. And then a few days after that, it's that big showdown between, and, between Lara and Garcia, excuse me, and Canelo and Berlang. I'm George Dimitellis. This is Boxing Scene's Top Stories. He's the pride of Guadalajara, the Mexican maestro, the unified super middleweight champion of the world, Canelo Alvarez. His challenger, undefeated knockout artist and pride of Puerto Rico, Edgar Berlanga. It's prime time. Canelo versus Berlanga, plus Lara versus Garcia. Saturday, September 14th, live on PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. For more ProBox TV, scan the QR code on the screen or go to the App Store and Google Play. ProBox TV, your boxing channel.